possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Right. It's over the bar. Hello, welcome to the RTE GA podcast. Mikey Stafford here. Um, we are starting with hurling. Uh, I've got Anthony Daly, Brendan Cummins, and Rory O'Neill with me here. And uh, we have big news. Uh, Joe Canning has retired from intercounty hurling. He has just announced. Anthony, mm. uh, he's been on the road an awfully long time at senior level. God, he probably made his debut for Port Dumna. Was he 15 or 16? Back when, or still when, Galway Senior Club Hurling was for men, not mm. for 15 year olds. So um, a bit like Wayne Rooney. It's the, not, never the kind of career that was going to go into the late thirties, really. Yeah, and like when you say it like that, Mike, you probably have to think Joe's thirty five or six. He's not like obviously he's thirty two, so yeah. it's, he's not that old. But there's some mileage on the clock. But I mean, one of the greatest players I've ever seen. I have to say, um, yeah. fantastic guy, down to earth. I remember going to watch him at LIT in the Fitzgibbon Cup. You know, you'd run into Limerick to watch a Fitzgibbon game, an attractive game, LIT versus UCG or something like that. And Joe would just light it up like he'd be, he'd be just magic. And he'd do a few things on a Wednesday at two o'clock and you'd be driving home saying, my God, how good is this guy? So, And then the amount of big moments uh, he delivered mm-hmm. for Galway. And, and, and to see him getting that All-Ireland uh, in 17, yeah. just magic. But also, and, and Brendan, I, I'm sure, would concur with this, I mean, magnificent for his club as well. And, and they haven't seen great times in the last two, three years, but Joe still to the fore for them all the time. And uh, yeah, brilliant, brilliant player. Yeah, Brendan, I think everybody, not just Joe Canning or his family, I think everybody was relieved he won that All-Ireland because you don't want to be known as the greatest hurler to never win an All-Ireland. Like, it's just not an accolade anybody wants, certainly not a man who played for Galway for so long. So he got an All-Ireland that his outrageous skills strength like he's just he's just a complete hurler basically and uh if he hadn't won in all ireland it would have been an outrage it would and, and i think in fairness to joe he showed how adaptable he was and how much he was going to give to the team there was a time when he came on the scene first that it all revolved around joe canning and uh one man could never win in all ireland right by himself but i think what he did as he got older he influenced others around him and his work rate at 11 in that final against watford was unbelievable, you know. I mean, he's hooking, he's blocking, he's working back. He adapted to the modern game. So he wasn't one of these fellas who just trotted into the edge of the square and hit the freeze. He realised that he needed to do something different. And like Anthony said, like a, a gentleman uh, off the field and on the field as well, particularly the amount of belts and wallops that he's after oh, yeah. getting. I mean, I, I played against him in a, in a league final. I think it was 2008. And he was only a young fella, obviously, then. And he picked up the ball on our... 65 and he ran straight down the middle and he didn't hit it until he got to me do you know what I mean and that's what he was able to do that X factor um, and the other firm as well I, I think if he because he's, he's retired out of the game now it is probably the right time to go and I don't mean that in a point of, of that I'm glad to see him gone I'd love to see him another year but I think it's important as a player that you retire a year too soon and that's, I think, you know, where it would fall with, with Joe. We'd all love to see him again next year. But he's retired at the peak. He broke the record over the weekend. There would definitely be another spin in him in 2022's championship. But I'd rather see him if he is going to go now than to be only a sub and coming on the odd time next year. So we remember him at his, at his height, we'll call it. And um, what an unbelievable player and a role model for countless forwards, not just in Galway, but throughout the country. And what a way to go, Rory, you know, mm. if it is his last game, which it seems it is, to, to break Henry Sheffield, Shefflin's championship scoring record as well yeah. is, uh, you know, how long those things will stand with the way scores are going in GA now. Oh, but yeah. those two boys, longevity, free taking responsibility, but also, crucially, um, massive contributions from play, raising, raising white flags and green flags. Yeah, and... Like the very first, I mean, obviously he was a special talent and we had all heard about him, even from an underage, uh, from the underage levels, that there was a special talent coming from Galway called Joe Canning. And we remember, I think he played minor All-Irelands. This was back when All-Irelands were uh, minor level were under 18. I think he might have played his first year minor at 15, if I'm not mistaken. And um, the first real time he sort of announced himself on the scene, I'll never forget it because I was there. 
um, uh, was against Cork in 2008. I think it was a qu- either a qualifier or a quarter final. Don Logue was sent off the same night. Cork were down to 14 men, but he gave an exhibition. And I'll always remember, actually, I think he might have scored. He was only a ch- still a kid. He was only 19, I think, maybe just turned 19. And he gave an exhibition. I think he might have ended up with about 2.14 the same, the same night. And I always remember one particular instance because it happened right in front of me where there was two Galway lads running for the same ball, Joe and somebody else. And he was only a young lad now. Think about this. And I, could, I, I actually, I could hear him saying, get away from it. You know, you could hear him say that to the other Galway player who I can't remember who was. And your man just got out of the way and he just picked it up and flew it over the bar from about 65 metres. You could just hear him kind of grunt and like, get away from it. This is mine. And just the way he I just took the leadership role. He just he drove Galway for so many years, probably deserved to win more than one. But at least he got the one. That's the most important thing. There's not too many All-Irelands in Galway. And 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 like as Delo said, some of the moments. I mean, Jesus, like the 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 point against Tipperary in that semi final from over on the wing, when you know, like what a score! Like to, to you know to have the cojones to take it on, you know the game in the melting pot, you know you you're you're so close, you know you can almost touch it. it like yeah, it's, and even the goals he's gotten, just a an absolutely outstanding player, one of the all time greats, and the game will be poor for his absence. Um, just before we move on to this weekend's game, Dale, as as a manager who would have come up against him, what did you say? Like, did you detail someone? Was it a two man job? Did it depend on the game? Was it just a case of a bit like how people treat Tony? <laughs> he's going to do what yeah. he's going to do, and we just have to do better than him. Yeah, it's funny. Um, we met him in eleven with the Dubs um, in Tullamore, and Tomas Brady would have been our fullback, and Tomas. Well, the big thing with Joe was you'd tell him not to dive in because at that stage of his career, he was more of a goal getter, probably. And if you got, if you slipped at all, he'd go in and bury it. Like, um, so to, funny enough, Tomas Brady lunged at him the first ball, poor old Tomas done his cruciate going to the ball. So we were not, we know what to do. Peter Kelly was wing back, and I said, We put back Kelly in him. I said to Richie Stepton, We put back Kelly in him. I said, Because he'd have the legs for him anyway. Peter Kelly would be the fastest guy in the panel. Like, and we put Kelly back on him. And uh, funny enough, Peter Kelly winds up, winds up getting an all-star because half of it was because of the job he did on Joe. And that'll measure with Joe as well. Like a lad that can go back and do a job like that, like Peter Kelly did. But because it was Joe and Joe was so Statue. special, that's yeah. it. Like, um, you know, and I, I remember even be, um, <laughs> it was myself and Eilish. We, we just took off to watch Galway and Kilkenny. I'm not sure what year now, 13 or 14 around then. In Tullamore, it was a drawn match. Uh, uh, Henry came up with a massive score to level it. Yeah. But remember early on, Deppern, he took on JJ and stuck it. Like, there wasn't too many taking on JJ Delaney and stick it. He just got there. And you're saying he won't be quick enough now to, to pass out JJ. And, and like he skinned him, soldered in, buried it. And I said, we're in for some day here. Like I said, the Kenning alone sure, it was just... Uh, he yeah. was just the joy to be at the game, to watch him. And we, As a manager, yeah, you... And I used to, you, you'd wonder would be better off midfield or full forward, you know that kind of way for Galway. Mm-hmm. But if you were the manager, the opposition team, I wanted in midfield. Midfield, yeah. it that way, further away from our goal, the better. <laughs> yeah, uh, look, he, he was brilliant. You, you just think of all the moments like that. That reverse hand pass will always stick in my mind as well. Yeah. And uh, so I say I'm going to keep going off, but I just want like yeah. it's such a career to celebrate. Brendan, one thing as a journalist that I always noticed was Joe Canning. Is a spiky individual. Joe Canning spoke his mind. Joe Canning was not a bland intercounty player. He was very opinionated. Like just recently was was given his opinion on referees, assessors, spoiling the game. And um if in a press conference, if he asked him a stupid question, Joe wouldn't answer it. He'd tell you it was a stupid question. He was very he'd keep you on your toes and he just seemed like a very bright and very self assured individual. Yeah, just a leader, like on and off the pitch. And I mean, he's a hurling man, first and foremost, you know. So if he felt there was something like we're talking about the slitters at the moment, we're talking about obviously referees and all that. He just gives his view. And in fairness, that's the honesty that's that's in him as well. You know, he just say what he thinks. And back to Dale O'Donnell, but I gave him told him more. Like, I think in years to come, we'll be telling that he's got the grandkids, maybe, that I was there when Henry Shefton or to when 
Joe Canny scored that point up along the sideline, sideline, and then Henry Sheffield did the exact same thing coming up the other mm. wing. Do you know what I mean? It's it's those yeah. moments, and the and the Lake Aguil, I can't wait to see Joe Canning's one. It's something that will be recorded and shown over and over again. I think to to the kids and all to show that, but yeah, he had his times with Galway where it didn't work out. I think there's a number of years there we didn't play. Again, he held his values. Then he came back and uh, and won his All Ireland. But all the way through, it's just laced with unbelievable skill. And honesty in the way he played on the pitch, and, um, and, three all, and is it three? Mm. Is it three All Ireland clubs, Brendan? Is it three All Ireland yeah. clubs that Port Tumna won as well? Like so, and it's, it, not and, bad, and, it's not a bad innings. Like and you, you the year, a couple, like a lash of all stars. Yeah, Leinster, two or three Leinsters, maybe more. Like I mean, it's it's. You it's, think it's, of himself and Damien Hayes to get a Rory with Port Tumna, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and at the back it's sweeping. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, and he and he won a Fitzgibbon as well, so he has the full set. I think he's the full set. Yeah, it's yeah. like you know, he's if not only Galway got into Munster there for a couple of years, you know. But, uh, <laughs> um, right, lads, thank you, Joe Canning, um, for the memories. And as I'd say, we'll be talking about him for years to come, and we will look forward to that Lake Regale as in TG Cahar will be uh, they'll be burrowing into the archives right now, saying that's in the next series anyway. Um, okay, so we do have two games to look forward to this weekend, and chronologically, hopefully. Let's us go with the, the vanquishers of Joe Canning uh, and Galway in Waterford who uh, travel down to Parky Cueve to take on Tipperary. This is the stage, obviously, where the defeated uh, provincial finalists come back into it and play the two remaining qualifiers. And it always raises the question, <laughs> uh, Dalo, you know, the, 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 you know that, that two, well, it's not as long a wait now as it used to be, but that little bit of a fallow period for the provincial finalists whose last match was a loss coming up against the team with a bit of momentum mm. in, in Waterford, whose momentum seemed to have stalled until last weekend, but uh, just the manner of their victory over Galway would have any team kind of buzzing in for a recovery session, if not a training session. Yeah, I was, was really impressed with him, Mike. Um, thought the buzz from last year was just back, you know, that uh, you sometimes, you know, you. I know Liam was so pumped up for the Limerick game and, and the image of uh, Liam Sheedy now. Uh, the image of, of Liam clapping the lads off at half time, half the job done, and would and and look, they didn't win, so you you people can make a bit of a skit over here for that yeah. crack, like you know, Monday so morning quarterback. Yeah, as we call the men was yeah, up yeah. for it, and, and smart be, Alex will be out. Correct, away, correct. Um, but like you saw a good bit of that from Cahill at the weekend as well, didn't you? He was he was wired up for it, and uh, he I come across him now at underage uh, with Tip when I was with Limerick and. He's a passionate guy, and that 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 side show is a fascinating one. Like to look forward as well, mm. you know, current temporary manager, possibly the future temporary mm. manager. Could I uh, ask actually, Dale? Or could I ask Brendan about that? Do you think that would be spoken about in the temporary dressing room beforehand, Brendan? The fact that Liam is in the up the opponent's dressing room. No, I think they'd be more worried about structure and bringing the fight to it and trying to get rid of that last thirty minutes against uh, Limerick. I don't think Liam Sheedy will, will mention Liam Cahill in the dressing room. He'll talk about Watford. He'll talk about what they'll bring. He'll look at videos of him and all. But I don't think he'll personalise as such like that. I agree with Delo that really, I suppose, Liam Cahill does look like he could be the next man in, in Tipperary. Um, and it doesn't really matter in a lot of ways how it goes the weekend because of his passion, the way he's set up the team. Mikey Beavens as well with him there, you know, and what they've done with underage in Tipperary. But Cahill's a winner like so yeah. he'll be growling down the line. He won't mind that's his blue and gold. The other side, all see he'll see is is you just want to win. white jersey, like and and that's what we'll all expect from him in, in Tipperary as well. So no, I don't think he'll be mentioned over the, the course of it. Yeah, well, Rory, beware the beware the manager scorned as well because he did seem he was the bookies' favourite there for a long time to 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 take over the uh, the the got job and tip until Liam Sheedy kind of threw his hat into the ring probably a little later in the day than we expected. So um. This fella has an incredible record. Yeah, incredible, and he has a point to prove, incre- I suppose. Incredible record. I mean, the championship, he's notching up championship victories there. He's after taking care, he's after, like, they've beaten, who have they beaten? They've beat, they're like, they've beaten a whole host of teams in Munster. They've now beaten Galway. They've beaten Kilkenny. These are all, like, this is all at senior level. That's not even to take into account what he's achieved at underage level. Like, this, no, I think this fella is the real deal. He, there's just a steeliness about him. Uh, that's why, funnily enough, going back to our original podcast, Mikey, why I, I felt that he'd he'd lift them from the the, the sort of the, the harrowing nature of the defeat last year in Ireland's final and last year's All Ireland final. I felt that 
to my mind, Waterford were a good bet to win the All Ireland this year. And even though I went against them the last day against Galway, I still think they have a really, really good chance. Um, <laughs> pri- primarily because this guy and, and a, the zip was back in their play the last day against Galway. They had that buzzing B mentality that was so sort of that's that's kind of a hallmark of all cattle teams where he just expects a hundred percent. And um, they're going to be a handful for Tipperary on Saturday. Make no mistake about it, especially especially on that Parky Queeve pitch, especially with the legs they have, especially with potentially Liam maybe looking to try and get one last twist out of uh, out of a team that's maybe pushing on a bit now. This is you know this is this this is set up. This is really really well set up. Yeah, we were talking about him last week. I think it was with, with Brendan Anthony, and he was just talking about. You could kind of we're talking about the nature of his management style and how he's uh, he's not as he's not the old cliche of an arm around the so, uh, shoulder manager. He's more uh, he's more to the point, and um, you know he seems to be knocking a tune out of a, a Waterford team who you know just unbelievable talent. But also, he does seem like the kind of manager who's not going to say, "Ah, well, as we've had three or four injuries this year, so we we, no we can take we can take a mulligan on this year." Like that's that's not this man's mentality whatsoever. No, and you, 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 you could see um, what it was doing to him, how bad they were against Clare, and after kind of a reasonably good league where they had tested out a few things and that. But um, there was a good team there as well, though. You have to, like, yeah. Liam's great manager, don't get me. Yeah. I, I, I mentioned that already. There's a good team, and especially now with Prunty back at three, but, but more importantly, Baron. Baron, like Baron is the man Baron. that makes it. He just makes a tick. He makes a he's, tick. He's yeah. a superb player, and having him back, I think. Just creates that kind of a fulcrum effect around the middle of their team and gives all other players around their kind of a liberating uh, mm. freedom, if you know what I mean. Like if that, that Jamie can get back, he can cover, and he also go up the field and score four points. So, yeah, I think, I, I think they're a really exciting team. Like if they had Stephen O'Keefe and if they had Tyg de Burke, you'd be saying probably they're the team to challenge Limerick, Limerick again. Yeah. But... Mm. They've, they've they've did a big game now. There's a big kick and tip as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, Brenda was just about that. We 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 been talking about Waterford almost exclusively here, and tip. We keep coming back to it. Like they're kind of you know they're, they're they're kind of seem to be swimming against the current of public opinion this year, even though they haven't done a lot wrong. You know, apart from lose to a, a Limerick team who nobody seems to quite have the number of yet. And um, do you think like they, they they're so experienced they don't seem like the kind of team who are going to take a defeat to Limerick so badly that it's going to knock their confidence and they're, they're also they, it's Tipperary and they're playing Waterford there's a certain level of arrogance there amongst the Tipperary team if you don't mind me saying that you know they'll, they'll expect you can to, say it Mike you can say it I can say yeah. it yeah they expect they expect to beat Waterford every time they play Waterford because they're Tipperary and that a fair enough assessment yeah, and I think the narrative around the game is that Waterford are going to get the ball shot from the puck out. They're going to run the ball up the middle of the pitch. Tip won't be able to follow him in their Zimmer mm. frames and cut the hot water. <laughs> <laughs> just going to beat the life on the Come back mm. here, Sonny. That's mm. fair enough too, right? But I just, I just think as well that... Oh, yeah. I'm not taking this the wrong way or anything else, but um, what's got... Yeah, it's, I, I think that in fairness to Limerick, in that second half blitz against Tipperary, I think... Tip will have learned a lot. One, someone needs to go down injured to stop the rot, right? Um, two, you need to bring your forwards back outside the opposition 65 to stop the running. Now, if you look at the first half and you look at the last 10 minutes of the Galway game, you have huge heart for Tipperary in that Watford defenders, as I generally say, have their nose in the trough. They don't look back over their shoulder to see where danger is because they're so enthusiastic about running to the ball. Now, if you do that and you leave a John McGrath figure or a Jamie Callan figure floating around the back, they'll be found with a pass, right, from Jason Ford. Now, if Tipperary get the ball inside 25 yards, with Sean O'Brien the last day, with Carl Mannion shot, they're going to have a goal. And Tip need only two or three goals here in this to keep Watford, stop Watford running at him. But there's no doubt that Tipperary's stick work is what they rely on, the way they manoeuvre the ball in the air is still going to be there, taking it to ground, flicking it to others. But it's whether what Tipperary can stop Watford counter-attacking him from their own 65 with Barron, with all those boys, with the wheels that they have. And um, that's going to be the key for me. And Tip, I think, will start maybe four changes the next day. 
and they'll bring the the older bucks in. We'll say in the finish to to finish the job. Oh, that's interesting. Who do you think is going to mm. start instead of who there then, Brendan? I think the goalkeeper. John McGrath. So. Yeah. yeah well, well, I think pa- John McGrath. I don't sure about John. Maybe mm. will come in at some stage. But I say Willie Paddy Connor Paddy Paddy Cadell. Paddy Cadell will start. Willie Connor seems to be the go-to man when you need work rate, fairness and tip. And it's what I was thinking about it in in the last couple of days. Like Bonner Mar, we, we talk about the hurling skill at Tipperary, right? Now, if Willie Connors can put his head down and work and work and work, maybe he could be that Bonner Mar type figure who might snipe a few pints as well. Cadell is the same way. So we need to get somebody in the engine room who can run, hook, block and tackle to clean up or filter the ball for the bubbles and Jason Fords of this world. Mm-hmm. Now, Michael Breen and we'll say Dan McCormack will put in a big shift as well. So like that middle third of the pitch, there may be enough fitness and energy around there to stifle Watford for long enough to put in the doubt, which will allow the hurling to flourish then. But that's what Chip will need to do. Yeah, I am obviously pretty busy with the Olympics at the moment and early starts. And uh, Rory, we threw the uh, threw the hurling draw on Morning Ireland into the mix uh, there on Monday morning. So uh, I was uh, sending out a tweet from the RTGA account and uh, instead of tagging Watford GA, I tagged Watford FC. And uh, so that 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 that, that uh, caused much hilarity among the uh, League of Ireland fraternity. Uh, um, then like Mikey's that, tiptoeing a bit, not, didn't Mikey? Not, yeah. not, not, <laughs> not, 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 not a bunch, not a bunch renowned for their sense of humor, mind you. Well, no, they enjoyed this, but <laughs> no, they'll do no. they'll do well to keep it to keep it pucked out to the other team, seeing as there's only eleven of them and they don't have hurls. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, I'll ask it to the two lads to call it in a minute, Rory. But you first. This this does seem like a proper quarter final, a very close oh. game, contrasting styles, everything you kind of want from a quarter final. And I, I find it hard to call, but I find oh, everything yeah. hard to call, especially when I back League of Ireland teams. I'm really, I like, I think, uh, really look forward to it. I suppose if there was one small negative, um, the throwing time is just that wee bit early. I'd love it if it was later throwing time, you know. And but look, I know there's scheduling issues, and there's a lot of games on, there's lots of sport on, and there's loads of matches on, and I understand all of that. But to my mind, it's nearly the biggest game of the weekend, hurling or football, um, and. Uh, um, it's it's going to be the uh, it's going to be the starter, and it's I'm just I just can't wait because I think there's so much at stake for from Tipperary's perspective about whether or not they can lift it from obviously the that second half, which I think they will. I think Liam will 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 probably look at Park and a lot of what happened in that second half, and maybe point to what happened in that first half and focus on that. And I think they will they will definitely come with a performance. They hundred percent will. There's no Liam Sheedy team that won't. But I just really do have a strong fancy for Waterford. I just think there's an energy, there's a buzz, there's a zip in their play now that I think just might have a little bit too much coming down the home stretch. But having said that, now there's one other small caveat to add. Now I know they're going to challenge it. Connor Gleeson, red card, he's a big loss because, you know, like, like every team needs a Connor Gleeson. And Watford particularly would have needed him. And I think that's a, now if they get a turn, they're looking to challenge it, I believe, on a technicality in terms of when the red card was dished out and all of that type of stuff. If they can get him off, I think they have a very good chance because he'll obviously tie down one of those forwards that um, uh, Brendan made mention of. But um, no, I just, I just have, a, I, I just think there's a, the, the, we, we mentioned momentum earlier and I think Watford will have it. And that may be just enough to carry the day, but it's going to be tight. Dalo, how do you see it going? Yeah, I probably go along with Rory. I think they might, you know, they might just have enough. I think Cleaston is a big thing now. You, 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 you got my line of thinking on that, Rory, because I think he's vital. He's vital. He, they, might, he, they, they might get him off now. You don't they know. They might. They might. I don't know. They should have left him uh-huh. in the dressing room at half time, shouldn't they? Take him <laughs> off at half time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, should yeah. be someone out watching what's uh, going on yeah. with the ref and the umpires. But yeah, I, I'd give a nod to Waterford, but. Uh, you Hesitant if, one, like yeah, that. like if tape come out, like Brendan's reference there to Zimmer frames, and I was going to say yeah. I was going to be smart as well, Brendan, and say about remember the father Ted, uh, the old lads playing the five side soccer, <laughs> yeah, like that's all they want, like that's fuel for you. Think yeah. Brendan and Paddy and Noel and Shamey are going to say this is the way I'm finishing up. You're mistaken. So, but I do think look at the Callum lines as the the Bennett Jack Fagans, yeah, that these guys seem to be. The last day, no, but how good is the form of the Leinster, let's say? How good is the form? It's hard to call it, isn't it? Clear mm. beat Wexford with a bit in hand, you would say. Wexford could have beaten Kilkenny. 
Galway didn't raise a gallop really in the two games. So how good is the form? That's that's the question mark I'd have. But I, yes, that I, I I just think maybe Waterford might have that bit of momentum that might get them over the line. But I wouldn't be any way confident now. We have any no. money in it. Yeah. All right. The, 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 big, the big Mo is working against you here, Brendan. What, what's the counter-argument? I think the, the, the counter-argument they're touching it there is that there, there is a fair bit of fight inside the Tipperary group. And I think they've learned a huge amount from the Limerick game. Plus, it'll be 19 degrees, I think, in Cork rather than 30 degrees. Yeah. So the race track, that's Parky Keeve. It'll be more of a traditional game. Bit of shower of rain here and there. Try running the ball when it's like a bar of soap. The turnovers of the Tipperary forward line. And, and what it'll tell me is if Jake Morris starts in the full forward line or Shamey Callanan and Shane Bennett gets the ball 40 yards out from him, will they come back to try to hook him and stop the wave coming from there? And if Tip do that often enough, I think that will be enough to put doubt in Watford's heads because Watford will see this as being the biggest chance to beat Tipperary that they've had in an awful long time now. I think, you know, so... There's a pressure in that, in that they're going into this game now with an expectation that you hammered Galway, bet them by 16 points at one stage. You got a few goals in the finisher. We're so good when they came back with 14 men, we went two more points up. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So there's a weight involved with that. Whereas Tipperary are coming in with everyone saying, ah, lads, look, should they just run you into the ground? I just know the lads in that dressing with a one big bang in them. Whether it's enough to get them all the way to winning all Ireland, I don't know, but I do think it'll be enough to get out of pocket keep the weekend. <laughs> Can I make one point on that, actually? Um, and I know it's a very separate point, but uh, uh, possibly something we probably should have discussed at the end, but look, well, it's in my head. Like, f- if, if Tipperary and Cork win, Cork will then have to play Limerick again, and Tipperary will be playing um, Kilkenny. And I think that's a small bit of a flaw in the current format. And I understand provincial finalists apparently have to be kept apart, but I'd question that. Why do they have to be kept apart? To my mind, it would have been far better if Cork and Tip were to win, which is a possibility, let's be honest, that if Cork and Tip played each other and Limerick played Kilkenny. But that's neither here nor there. Sorry. It has to be some carrot for winning In it. Monster yeah. and Leinster, though, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand the runners up thing. I don't I don't get why. Limerick would be delighted. Advantage. Limerick would be delighted to play Kilkenny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, okay, so um okay, well look, that looks like an, an intriguing match. Um we'll move on to the second one. Uh Dalo. The uh, the carrot for the Leinster finalists uh, beating Leinster finalists Dublin obviously is is to play is to play Cork. Um, they seem like they're going to be back to full enough strength. Fingers crossed. They should have those players who who missed out due to due to COVID back anyway. But I guess the bigger question mark and the most important question mark. No offense to those four is around Owen O'Donnell, really, isn't it? Because. Christ, g- g- given Cork's, uh, you know, desire to score goals, Owen O'Donnell would be a bit of a help. Yeah, that's. I think that's probably the game swinger for me. I, I think if Owen O'Donnell is fit and the boys are fine, uh, Keen O'Callaghan and uh, Ronan Hayes, I, I give them a right chance. Dublin, I do think, like if it was Clare had won, just say Tony had planted the ball in the net instead of Patrick Collins making a brilliant save. If it was clear in Dublin, I wouldn't be too cocky, but this one, one iota, I think Dublin had building something really good with Owen O'Donnell, with Liam Rush, with Conor Burke then acting as this kind of seventh defender and the form of the likes of Sutcliffe. Like to, just said, Donald Burke had an off day in the, in the Leinster final. But who's to say what level of, you know, the foundations of their building being rattled with that news that morning? Like, sure, I mean... To, yeah. I can't, I, I just can't get my head around mm-hmm. a hurling game that you had those sort of, that news. And then your best man, maybe, in, in one way, is two minutes in. You know, a bad call to play him, I would say, if it's to be critical of Matty and he's doing a lot right. Um, but look, maybe some of that is down to Owen as well. So, um, look, hopefully he didn't do enough damage that would keep him out. It'd be great to have him there. I, I, think, it's a, I think it's a great game. So I think this is as good a game as the other one. And there's not, like, there's a narrative there like this. It's the soft draw for Cork. That's like, the thing that's bugging me. Like, that's the thing that's yeah. bugging me. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. that's it. Like they, these are a good team. Like you consider, like the way Sutcliffe is hurling, the way Rush is hurling again. They are back to the time in thirteen when we won Leinster. Like and very unlucky against Cork, maybe in some ways in Ireland semi final. And I, I, I think Dublin have a right chance. I mean, go through their team. Dara Gray is playing great stuff. You know, Smith and O'Callaghan will be rock solid in the corners if one is there. 
Um, as I said, Rush is playing well. The two Vincents by in the middle of the field. I, th- I think this is a good Dublin team, and they've, they're on to something good. I, I think this is nearly harder call than the other one. Mm-hmm. I think this this is a dangerous, very very dangerous game for Cork. Now maybe yeah. it, maybe a few people I've heard talking about it have said if Cork think this is going to be a handy, they'll be cast. So maybe forewarmed <laughs> is going to help them. But I, I, I also not sitting on the fence. I actually said on another podcast that I'd go for a draw on this. It'd be worth sticking a tenner at 14 to 1, <laughs> a draw on this, uh, because this will be tight, I think. Oh, Rory's only dying, dying for there to be a draw. He's been on two championships now without having a penalty shootout on one of his live broadcasts. Mm. You, want one, you want one bad, Rory. I know you do. I can see the want yeah. in your eyes, even if it was Cork. Not, not really, not really. That game's behind a paywall, but we <laughs> won't go there. <laughs> no, I, I didn't say this game specifically. I said a game. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Brendan, we, we, we were talking last week about, you know, Cork needing to kind of prove they put their head where someone else wouldn't put a shovel, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, they came out on, on the right side of, of a, a good game against Clare. I, is there, would it be fair to say that Dublin might offer a little bit more of that head shovel kind of a, kind of a test? Because when you look at how they played against Kilkenny in particular, this is a team who they're, they're just, they're dogs. They're oh, sorry, against Galway in particular, like and in defeat against Kilkenny. They, they're they just, they're tough as nails. They know what they're doing. And, you know, the, the old adage, everybody's got a plan till they, get, till, till they get a punch in the face. Like, this Dublin team will make you think about a plan B. They will. And and I think the, the, the fact that Rush or Conor Burke will sit will mean that when Jack O'Connor gets the ball and turns his man, there's going to be a second fellow waiting for him. And there will be times inside the way Dublin play that, that Cork will have one inside on the edge of the square, whether that's Patrick Organ. And we saw... I suppose that, you know, with Desi Hutchinson, how effective it can be as a weapon inside. But I'm not too sure if Cork have that ball winner in there. And that's what they'll need to do. Um, I think Cork will never be as vulnerable as they are now um, because of all the talk about Dublin and, and all that. And I, at the start of the year, have to say, I thought Dublin would just look a little bit rudderless and all that. But by God, once this, this championship start, even the performance against Kilkenny, like it, it did look like a foregone delusion. Kilkenny were going to win the game. But yet Dublin hung in there and their system and their process was working. So the only fear I'd have for Dublin is that because you're going to have Conor Burke standing on one end of the field in his own, you're going to have Coleman on the other side of the field standing by himself as well. And if he will start to open up and pass the ball around and start pinging it to Harnedy and these lads on the run and Robbie O'Flynn, then they could start to slice through Dublin and cause an overlap. But either way... Like Taylor said, it's going to be it's going to be tight. I think Cork will win it eventually, um, because I think they just have that little bit of momentum now and a bit of confidence in the last day, and a feeling that, geez, you know what, our look might be in a bit because when Tony Kelly came through, I was sure I could nearly see the umpire nudging towards the green flag, even you know. Um, but oh. they got a little break that they needed. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That whimper was uh, Anthony Daly reliving the anguish. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was sometimes incredible. the group you need that though like some like Cork if you think about it if you're to be a Cork supporter you say my god when are we going to get a bit of a break here like you know we look like you're not going to win a championship match again this kind of stuff was going on and they've, they've an unbelievable backroom team you know so to be it would have been a pity if they had lost last weekend from a Cork point of view with the setup that they have behind them um, but now they've got a big opportunity now against the, against the dubs but it won't be simple they'll know that Rory yeah. I take it you're you, you are not um you, you're not taking dubs for granted. Well, I certainly wouldn't. I'm not too sure about the players or the management. Um, I'd say to go back to the point we were making in relation to Brendan and the Tipperary attitude towards Waterford, I would I'm, I could safely say, <clears throat> I don't, and I don't mean this in a pejorative way because I'm speaking against my own, but Cork hurling folk would have a similar attitude towards Dublin. I mean, I think as Eamon De Valera was the tee shot the last time Dublin bet us in the championship. So I, I like I, 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 I don't necessarily see Cork slipping up now, given the chance to make it Ireland semi final weekend. That surely is a massive motivation for this team, like to be able to bring. Hopefully, the numbers will be big for the semi finals, and you'll be able to bring you no know, twenty thousand up to Croke Park, or whoever you're playing. Regardless, I think that's a huge carrot, and surely they won't be silly or stupid enough to let that slip. Especially as Brendan just mentioned, the momentum. But the danger is this notion that it's a handy draw. I think that 
that is that is that that's like a disease that can become contagious and if it seeps in at all you know they could be on the end of a sucker punch Dublin are no pushovers one thing I would say is to go back to Anthony made mention of something earlier I do believe there's a big disparity at the minute between Leinster hurling and Munster hurling I just think Munster hurling everything that's done in Munster is done faster it's just a faster pace everything about it is quicker faster Okay, the hits are the same, we'll say, but it's just the, the way the ball is pinging about, I think the Leinster teams are struggling a little bit in this kind of summer conditions that we're having. Um, obviously, the other big thing that is going to play in Cork's favour, let's be honest, is the game is in Turles, which is effectively a home venue for Cork, I would suggest, in comparison to Dublin. I mean, you know, you saw the Miners, um, you saw uh, the Miners up there last night with a good win over Limerick. And, and there's a bit of a feel-good factor around Cork hurling again. Obviously, the under-20s are playing tonight in the Munster final against Limerick. That's live on TV as well. And I think we have a bench now for the first time in a while. Now, having said that, he may start the likes of Shane Barton and Alan Connolly this time around, even though it's very soon for them. And the gas thing is they were actually eligible to play in that under-20 final tonight, if I'm not mistaken, Dalo. Is that correct? They would have been eligible had they not been drafted into the senior. Well, that's it, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, which is a bit of a pity. But at the same time, look, they're ready for senior in terms of their ability. I just think they're a little bit light. They need a bit of filling out. But look, I'm sure that'll come. So all that weighed up, I just can't foresee Cork being beaten. But I definitely think Dublin will bring a challenge. I mean, the, 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 the gap was only six points last winter. I would probably hazard it mightn't be too dissimilar this time round. Um, but you know, yeah, I would expect Cork to win. I know the thing there, Rory. I I just say is, like, I believe Shemi Harndry moved heaven and earth to get himself ready for the Clare game. Yeah, yeah in terms yeah, of yeah, rehab, yeah. how ready the, was, was it? A dead leg game? or something he had there? Yeah, he got a, a bad number, dead leg against Limerick. Yeah, but I think it took him off maybe the seventieth minute, did it? So he'd a hard yeah, shift. Yeah. Yeah. He, like, yeah. If he's so happened important. to him for me, he's so important. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely yeah, crucial, yeah, crucial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Just Brendan, I I know Rory is a rare breed and being a dual cold fan down there, but they're not they're not long bouncing back from a good hiding in football and looking ahead to, you know, great better days ahead in Harlan. It's good to see to, the, to keep, good to see the head. rebels of the strut back. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, always, that, yeah. Yeah, the old swag the old swag will be back. And that is like and that and like we'll talk about it here, but Dale will tell you, like, you can nearly smell it around the dressing room. The week of a match or after the draw has been made, if people are complacent or lackadaisical, and sometimes as a manager, you're probably torn. Do I say it out loud? Don't be lackadaisical <laughs> and put a spotlight on it, causing hassle, or do I say nothing and regret not saying it on the Sunday after the match? Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. a hard, mm. it's a hard, hard week now to uh, to get the tone right. We'll call it like, especially mm. when everybody is writing off Dublin, which is which is unfair. Yeah, yeah. The one, the one, the one player, and I don't. Again, I don't know how fit he is. Uh, the one player that I and like, I'd love to see them maybe try him from the start if he was fit. Would be someone like Bill Cooper. I just think his ability to go in there and just flake all around him early on, you know, you know, you'll end up having to take him off eventually because like, he won't think, be right there, Rory, will he? But he it's won't not, be right. He won't be right. It's, no, him. he's making the bench, and he's. But I just think he's more of an impact. At the, I think it, he starts games better. I I think someone like Bill coming in off the bench. What you want coming in off the bench is your is your is your little buzzy bees again. You know, lads that are that can get in there when fellas have the engine. The engines are starting to kind of seize up a small bit, and they can get onto ball and get into more space. That's where Connolly and Barrett I thought did really well the last day. And in fairness to the management, because I thought they did really well on that. The momentum had started to shift back to Clare and he dropped in the two lads. And I think between them, they had gotten something like 1-3 or 1-4 mm -hmm. within the space of a couple of minutes. And that was a very, very good call, which is they, don't, they didn't get a huge amount of credit for, I thought, in the aftermath. So they're smart enough on the line now. And as, Bren, as, as Brendan said, like, you know, they have an all-star cast there. So they, that shouldn't be a problem anyway, hopefully, come Saturday night. Okay, well, intriguing game. Um... I'll ask you in a word then to, to call it because I, I've lost track now. But I, I think Dalo, you're giving the dubs, you're giving the dubs a good chance, but you're back in a draw. Yeah, I just think it's one of those ones. I have a feeling it'll go down to the wire, and uh, I think it'll be worth a, a fella going into his local bookmaker and sticking a tenner on the draw, and maybe the old penalties. Hoggy maybe to win it with a penalty <laughs> in the 134th minute. So yeah, I think Hoggy could, take I think out his 44 inch hurling score to win a penalty. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> How about you, 
Um, yeah, I think Cork by maybe three or four. I think when all is said and done, they'll because um, if they do get ahead, Dublin will potentially have to come out and play, which will lose the sweeper, which opens up room then for the um, the speed of Barrett and DC and these lads uh, and and O'Connor to to finish the job. Okay, and Rory, you're you're, you're yeah, back in the club yeah, band yeah, just yeah, to get yeah, it done. Yeah, like, like I, yeah, you just, I think, uh, I think the, the with everything that's going on, obviously tonight now is obviously going to be a big game as well. Now, and if they were to win tonight, and if if the senior team were to win on Saturday, I think it puts Cork Hurling in a very, it, it, it it's a good innings for 2021. Then, and you're building again. Okay. Mikey, I think, uh, in 13, no, and that's happened on because I was involved in bullshit, but, um. Dublin had beaten Kilkenny since Charlie Hawhey was the Taoiseach, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the reference to De Valera might be telling yeah, here on this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's been a notable day for the Hawhey, it's his grandniece won right. for Hong Kong's first ever swimming medal today in the Olympics. Oh, it's in the stars, it's in the stars. <laughs> yeah. We're jumping around. Um, <laughs> all right, we're going to be back in a minute to discuss football with Kieran Whelan and Desi Dolan. Wait there now. He hits it, he hits it, it's over the bar! Right now, I'm joined as always by Rory O'Neill, uh, by Desi Dolan, and by Kieran Whelan. How are we all doing, lads? Very good. Very, very good, Mikey. Very good, Mikey. And uh, just want to just jump in and really at the start of the podcast and just address something from last weekend. It's bad enough in our game when you get the blame on the front of house for things that you are responsible for without getting the blame for things you're not responsible for. And I know that there was a lot of rubbish thrown around there about the man of the match situation last weekend below in Killarney. And that was my fault. It wasn't Desi's fault. It wasn't Jer Canning's fault. It was my fault. And it was like, there's when you're presenting from one venue and the match is coming from another venue, it can be fraught in a communications uh, capacity. And whatever miscommunication happened, the two lads were prompted to deliver the man of the match on air, which wasn't the plan. And the reason being is I took that responsibility away from the co-commentator and the commentator for very simple reasons. The first reason is they're not the best people to actually adjudicate on that simply because they're very immersed in the game. And the second reason is you're hassling the commentary team very often at a time in the game when the game is reaching a sort of a frantic peak point. So it was absolutely not Desi's fault, 100%. And I just wanted to put that on the record here. So thank you, Rory. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah I suppose people mightn't understand the dynamics. They don't understand. Like, and they don't there's, understand. There's, there's voices yeah. in your ear all the time. Like, but yeah, yeah. It threw me, yeah. threw me off. But um, it, of course it did. Um, and, and my apologies on that. Desi. And in fairness, like, uh, sure, like. Paulie Clifford was absolutely immense. Um, Jeezy, some Josh. man. Sean O'Shea wasn't. Oh, Sean O'Shea was considered wasn't, wasn't, wasn't the bad. Was the bad option either? Considered like, like two know. seconds notice. Two I think seconds. I, did. Yeah. I was did like a really one, good job. Was like yeah. one six. Yeah, Sean O'Shea, give it to the handy one. <laughs> um, yeah. And then like you're looking back at Paddy Clifford. I oh, set that up. He set that up. Jizzy kicked that. Yeah, he set that up. Paddy <laughs> Clifford's probably <a> better option. <laughs> Jesus, Desi, between between that and your outfit getting slated, you had a rough yeah, afternoon. I tell you, Tomas O'Shea. Uh, Tomas O'Shea, given fashion as advice, is the biggest joke. <laughs> <laughs> because he has had some mares in his time and like no no word like the biggest you know, obviously the dicky bow on the sunday game like it was a total car crash so, he, he, no, he, he hasn't got away with it yet i i, I happens that's the hack on to bed that one now we want to go after him again desi in fairness i let you off you know because yeah, listen, i've been up. i've been there myself with a famous wine suit that didn't go down <laughs> but in fairness like the sandals were a cat <laughs> Were. I, I swear to God, there's no light. 30 degrees heat, sitting in the car, going, I'm going I, I may go in here, I'm baking the car. I had a lovely pair of little slip on sandal shoes, shoe, sandals, shoes, shoes. I walked 50 yards, I was start, the sweat was starting to build up under the armpit, armpits, wheel on. You know, when you're on TV and the sweat in the armpits. And I was like, Am I going back to the car? Or am I going to just go with the sandals? And I didn't think I'd be seen. You know, the way you get the top half or something like that, but obviously it got nailed. 
but people, people, just that social media. People are so quick That's to it. highlight anti-social media. Well, yeah. highlight yeah. things that really, really aren't <clears throat> important in the grand no. scheme of things. No. No. You you see, the other thing, Mikey. The other yeah. thing we forget is that you know Rory's talking about the heat of the game and stuff like that. We forget that Cork were playing. Yeah. <laughs> and they were playing pretty poor at the time as well so Good, that's an like, understatement. Any, anybody that's witnessed Rory watching court games will understand Football. that he can get fairly fairly uptight and annoyed during the games you know? <laughs> so that's that probably a a factor I would have thought <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. probably was. Yeah. less said about that the better let's move on to this yeah. weekend so, yeah. but, but you see, the, the massacre of Killarney will not refer to the Cork footballers. It's going to refer to no. Desi from now on. Anyway, he's taking yeah. the heat off your own. Yeah. 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 I'll get to Moss back, don't you worry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to affairs this weekend, lads. Um, we have two more provincial finals. There are, by my calculation, should I carry the one? Six teams left in the All-Ireland Football Championship, and there will be four after this weekend. Um, let's start in Ulster, um, arguably. And only arguably now, not certainly the more uh, more interesting of the two games, which is not something to be able to say, but on the day of week, week of a Leinster football final in a while. Um, Desi, Monaghan showed tremendous mm. uh, emotional, uh, psychological, physical resolve, every kind of resolve the last day out after the tragedy that, that struck the GA community. And I think anybody who's suffered grief, they can kind of get through things on you know, whatever that strange kind of energy you have that gets you through after a tragedy or a bereavement, they can kind of hit you like a bag of rocks afterwards then, can't it? And you, you you would kind of worry from a sporting point of view if similar could happen to Monaghan here. Yeah, no, it was a terrible week for them. But I think, like you've seen, it, Seamus McEnany or Banty came out, spoke very well. Um, uh, but you would have to say that the, the Monaghan team as a whole have showed unbelievably an unbelievable character time and time and time again we're looking at like they have so much resilience we're talking 10 15 years of resilience there they're a county that have punched way above their where they should be and like they're much more like when you think monaghan you're going oh connor mcmahon it's like ace free taker but like they really there's some of their parts like they are an incredible bunch of players i think banty has done a great job to kind of keep the motivation going because I thought they'd fall off a little bit. I actually genuinely thought that it might struggle in the next couple of years, but they're, they've found players. That's the one thing I'm going to say about the Monon team is they found a couple of young players is really good. And then they brought in Donny Buckley, which the training sessions obviously be very enjoyable for the players, but they seem energized, they seem reinvigorated. But like the one thing, they're so resilient. They are like against God, but they should have been really good. They weren't. Um, they the should last, have been beaten by Armagh. They yeah. should have been beaten by Armagh. They weren't. Um, they're in Division One for years now. Like they, Eight. like when you put all that together, you have to really admire the county. And then you'd look at other counties around, and everyone's talking about resources and different things like that. But they're an example of a county that have worked just through honest effort and um resilience they've achieved some fantastic results over the years. And going into this weekend again. Like who is like who's to say that they won't win this match? Like Tyrone, it, it's easy to say Tyrone are all sorted now because they won their last the semi final against Donegal. But like, really, is everything is everything is, like I, I've seen such poor performances from Tyrone? I don't think they're probably as good maybe as people think. It, that's another that's a debate that you could have. Like, is like where are Tyrone at right now? That's the question. Yeah, that's. It's so competitive up in Ulster, Kieran, that, that you know, it, it, you know, if you did kind of power rankings, which is the one to in certain sports, like Ulster would be sliding up and down constantly. Um, so now Tyrone obviously have taken out Donegal, you know, 14 man Donegal who lost her talisman. So there's a little asterisk next to that result. Mm -hmm. That said, they were incredibly impressive. But in there's a famous meme that goes around, really, isn't there? If you know the two Spider-Mans pointing at each other, we always see it on social media. Monaghan and Tyrone are a bit that way, because Monaghan can really match up to Tyrone's strengths. Everywhere that Tyrone are strong, Monaghan tend to be strong, and they can play a similar game, and they can really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tyrone, which I suppose the Donegal game would have been a little bit different in that respect. Yeah, the only thing I'd say on that, Mikey, is that, you know, if Monaghan thought at the start of the year they are going to get to an Ulster final, who was the one team they possibly didn't want to play? Tyrone, Tyrone just seemed to have an edge on Monaghan, you know, in recent years. And I think if you were looking at the game going ahead, if you were to go back a couple of years and this was Mickey Hart's team, 
you probably fancy them to beat Man and they mightn't do it in a spectacular way, but they'd probably grind it out, you know, and, and they were well able to do that over that oh, in, in recent years. Monaghan, you know, to me, our team, yeah, they, they, they've been hugely exciting to watch. Uh, you know, they go for goals, they get a sniff, they have like, they have a great balance throughout their team in that they have a brilliant goalkeeper, excellent goalkeeper who can ping kickouts. He's still like, he's, he's probably the best in the country at the moment. He's playing as an extra defender. Um, they have a structure where Darren Hughes drops back. Now, sometimes he might be too deep and, and, and teams can score too easily from, from out, the, out the arc. But then they have a tackle main backs in, in O'Connell and Mike and Espy. McCarran, if he gets the ball in hand, that's the problem. If he gets the ball in hand, he's liable to do damage. you know. And then you have McManus up front and then they've introduced the likes of Desi Ward. Like They've done a phenomenal job in terms of keeping themselves, as Desi said, at that level. Um, but the one question you've got to ask going into the weekend is, you know, will, will Tyrone let Monaghan score four goals, you know, like they did against Donegal and Armagh? I, I don't think they will. Uh, I definitely think Tyrone got a lesson down in Kerry. Uh, we've definitely seen them move back towards a conservative type approach. Uh, like even the team they picked, I suppose, the last day against Donegal, you know, it was conservative in terms of the forwards. Now, they like to Sludden and uh, Kieran McGreary. They, they pitched in with three points each and they're well able to attack as well. But they have a defensive kind of mindset. Myler is going to drop back in there. Tyrone also have man markers, lads. That's, that's the key thing, you know, in, in, in McNamee and Hampsey. That there's the, a the fair chance they will tie down one or two of Monaghan's key, key players. You know, Conor McManus obviously being one of them. So... I just think that if we see a Tyrone team that more aligns maybe is a mix between, but more going towards the Mickey Hart kind of era where they will get bodies back and they will defend and they have guys to come off the bench in the last 15, 20 minutes. Uh, I, I, I would fancy Tyrone to come true. If it turns into a shootout, anything could happen because Monaghan Armagh was a shoot. It was absolutely, absolutely brilliant stuff, lads. It was brilliant. End, end stuff. Uh, you know, there was a shot off nearly every attack. Uh, there was still a good few hits in the game. And, and that was, you know, I think that game led to people questioning the physicality around the game. Uh, there was still a good few good hits in it. It was just, I, I don't know, the day that it was in it, maybe it was the conditions, you know, the very hard pitch. It just led to brilliant end-to-end -end stuff. I think we have the potential to see something similar in Crow Park because Crow Park pitch, again, we know we saw last week, big, big open spaces. But I just think, even though there is, the Michael Murphy factor did contribute and Donegal were still hanging on their coattails with 10 minutes to go. For me, I think Tyrone just have a little bit more, I think, of structure about them um, and, 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 and may just get the scores easier uh, than Monaghan will. But it, it, it's, it has the potential to be a cracker. But Wheelow, and let's say you say if, if they adopt a more Mickey Hart style approach for this final, is that good enough for Tyrone going forward to win All-Ireland? Possibly not, Desi, but I think they'd be, they'd be looking at an Ulster title at this point. Do you know what I mean? And Would I think that be, do you think that yeah. that'd be enough for their ambitions in Tyrone, like a county like Tyrone? No, but I, but I think from, from, my, from the perspective of that Kerry game, I definitely think we saw in the last, you know, since the league that they've adjusted and, 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 and they're not pressing as much maybe out the field and they're dropping that little bit deeper and they're getting guys back there. And obviously they, they kind of had to do that against Donegal. And they look at what Monaghan done, how they opened up. Monaghan opened up Armagh down the middle. It was kick passes, running games. Like, they ain't going to let that happen. They ain't going to let but that happen. But it's, it's an amazing guys like, let's say, um, Brian Dewar, Fergal Logan come in. Uh, they're trying to adopt. They really have tried to adopt a kicking game. Like, they're trying to kick the ball mm. into Donny, McKenna, uh, McCurry. They're trying as much as possible to kick. And they got scutched in a couple of league games. And then they're like, oh, Lads, we have a style of football that we know that will work. I know yep. people have been criticised Mickey Hart heavily over the years, and I think we should revert back to it for an Ulster final. It's, do you know, it's kind of a rock, kind of, like where are your ambitions lying? And I thought Brian Dewar, um, like I was at the game down in Killarney where they were have six goals. It was absolutely incredible. But their commitment to offensive play was admirable despite the fact that they were conceding so much. And now we're going to re revert to type. And I still don't think going forward, they might win Sunday, but I don't think they win All-Ireland, 
with without getting that balance right. Yeah, it's well, balance. Not... It's balance, though, isn't it? They have to. They have to find a blend, don't they? Like yeah. Rory, Rory, they have to find. Mm. They have to. They haven't marry found it Mickey. yet. Is what I'm saying. I don't yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, they have yeah. to marry Mickey's. <clears throat> Mickey's kind of platform, shall we say, with mm. as you say that kicking game to try and get the ball to the two or three very very good forwards <laughs> and the who, thing is who are actually standing in the right end of the pitch which who knew darren the... mccurry could play football <laughs> yeah i know yeah. i know he was outstanding he was outstanding i watched the league game between the two of them last night um and that's only eight weeks ago and i know people can say you can be f- f- uh, finicky about what, how much you can read into league football especially this year but it was a very competitive game i tell you this much They've appointed David Goff as referee, and that is a superb appointment because he's going to need eyes to the back of his head. There were 16 cards in that match. There was, uh, yeah, 12 yellows and four blacks. So to my mind, discipline is going to be essential, absolutely essential. If you lose a man for 10 minutes, it was really interesting, actually. Um, uh, Munro was black carded early on when uh, Tyrone were 7-3 up. And by the time he came back, Monaghan were winning 9-7. And vice versa, it happened later on when Bannigan was given a black card where Monaghan were winning 13-10. And by the time they got back to uh, 15 players, um, Tyrone had retaken the lead 14-13 and finished 14 points apiece. Just one or yeah. Yeah, so I just think discipline is going to be a massive key. It like if like you they're going to, like because they they obviously tend to square off against each other in, in in a brilliant way for football. I think we can be too sanit very sanitary around Gaelic football nowadays. I'm really looking forward to the. I hope it's nasty. Like I hope they get stuck into each other, and I'm really looking forward to this. This will be a brilliant game. I have a feeling this will be real old school um, Gaelic football. But one of the things that was very noticeable was. And again, Wheelo, you'd be perfectly poised to make it an adjudication here. Are both teams a little weak at midfield? And they're very, very reliant on their goalkeepers, as you pointed out, for those laser kickouts. They, they're hugging touchlines. They obviously play their keepers in both sweeper keeper fashions. Keepers are coming up and taking 45s and freezes as well. Their goalkeepers, both goalkeepers, are, are massively influential. <laughs> but... They do struggle. I think both teams are weak at midfield. And I think where the way the game has gone now with the kickouts and with teams pushing up, I think a strong midfield could be the undoing of both of them down the line. But I think it nearly cancels each other out on Saturday. Yeah, I, I think on that, Roy, just looking at their, their previous games, and I was thinking about this last night myself as well, you know, most teams now are going for that high press kickout, right? Yeah. Um, and 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 both both Monaghan and Tyrone in their in, in their respective games have, have have gone for that that high press. What would be interesting on Sunday is like Began can land the ball on the half forward line. Like he you know the last day against Armagh he was actually landing it in the half forward line uh, and taking ten or eleven lads out out of the play. Morgan can do something similar. Uh, I think Began is slightly better at it, but but it's going to be very interesting to see will because particularly the Armagh game you know there was. The chances that came off long kickouts, like Armas transition when they get away that long that long kickout, boom, they're up. Or I mean, sorry, Monin, when they get away that long kickout, they can get scores within three or four seconds, and they're excellent at it. So I think both teams will look at that aspect and, and will say, you know, there could be an element of conservatives and say, do we really want to press aggressively on the kickouts because uh, it could expose us. If they get one over the top, both teams. So it's it, that's the entrance dynamic when you're coming into a game where the keeper might have a weak kick out or a short kick out, or he's only landing in midfield. But the fact that these guys can take ten or eleven guys out of a press with a long kick out is going to be very, very interesting to see how the team set up. But I agree with you in terms of uh, Goff. Like Goff is the one referee that has eye, those have eyes in the back. Of eyes in the back of his head, and he pulls he pulls everybody off the ball. He pulls a lot of stuff off the ball. So and they will have him studied and and, and he is good authority as well. Wheelo, he's a great yeah, authority on a game yeah, as well. And, and, and they will be alert to that. And Monin, this the Monin picked up a lot of black cards in, in in the league, and that's one thing that they're going to have to be conscious of and be aware of. I thought against Galway, they handled it brilliantly when they did pick up the black cards. They had it. They had a very distinct plan when they did pick up the black cards and keep possession, in, in, slow the clock. Keep possession, they slowed the yeah. clock, they got bodies back, they kept themselves in the game. They were well developed and, and well organized. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 it's, it, it's a fascinating tactical battle between both managers. And I, I agree with you, Desi, that I think Tyrone will be able to maybe strike a bit of balance because Tyrone will let or Monaghan will let Tyrone kick the ball a bit. 
I'm, letting... dis I'm disappointed possibly like uh, Peter Sondara isn't playing. He picked up that injury in Killarney. But like I think he's going forward for Tyrone. He could be... He has the intelligence on the ball to create good opportunities for the rest of the players. And that's what I think is vital to get somebody that can unlock the offensive style of play that you need. And I think he has the wherewithal, the, the skills, you know, his ball handling is really good, his finishing. I think that's really, it's a big loss. He, hopefully he can get back in somewhere along the, for the championship. Just to see him because I think he's getting to the age where we haven't seen him, but we know the potential that he'll have. Oh, serious potential. Okay, let's, uh, we have to move on to the next final so quickly. In a word, call it Rory first. I think, uh, I just think there's more strings to Tyrone's bow up front. And I think they'll probably find it that little bit easier to get scores. Um, and I think Croke Park will suit them, even though both teams are in really good physical condition. I just think Tyrone's uh, the, 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 when they will have to run the ball, they'll be well. They'll, that that that'll be another good weapon. They've got a lot of good athletes, and I just think Tyrone to edge it. Okay, Desi. Yeah, no, I have to agree. When Wheeler was talking, I was going, yeah, a little bit more defensive, not give away the goals. Monaghan have they've been riding their luck a little bit throughout the the league and championship this year. Um, I just think the quality, there's a lot of strength all over themselves. Tyrone have a lot of very good footballers. McNamee back there. Uh, you have your McKernans. You said Hamsey as well. Peter Hart. Matty Donnelly coming back into a bit of form is a big oh, and, and Desi, I'd have a feeling Conor McKenna will start. I think yeah, he'll start. Yeah, uh, big start. man. But um, I, just for me and Darren McCurry playing extremely well, confidence up. Oh, it's, it's amazing how quickly things can change. All of a sudden, they're in a final. It's the people aren't talking about Killarney and six goals. They're thinking, geez, Tyrone are a team that could be a force to be reckoned with. And if they do win, they get play the boys down from below, down Kerry again. So that'll be a really interesting battle. Mm. So Kerry for me, or Tyrone for me, sorry. <laughs> we look. Yeah, Tyrone for me, Mikey, because they have a couple of man markers, I think, which is crucial. Um, and it is in their DNA to be able to mix it up as much as they want to play kicking game, front football, they'd be able to run it if required and they'd be able to adjust their game plan. Um, Monon, you just don't know what you're going to get. They could stick a few in the net, but they're just a little bit loose at the back and I think Tyrone will expose that. Okay. Uh, I'll stick with you, Wheelow. Uh, we have the, the Leinster football final, Dublin and Kildare. Is it finally time for Suburbia to rise up and uh, <laughs> flex their and finally down, down their oh, yeah, metropolis well, masters? Good. We're done and dusted, Mikey. The white flag is waving here. <laughs> we're, we're, we're passing it over. It's done. Uh, our time is up. Uh, this is, uh, I do think, you know, the, the, okay, I, I still fancy Dublin to win uh, on Sunday. I, and I think they'll, they'll win with a bit of ease uh, still. I, I know Kildare have been pro progressing, uh, but we're quite lucky to win against Westmead, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, yep. Only for the excellence of Daniel Flynn. Uh, up front, you know, Neil Flynn played well, but I thought Westmead were, were very, very good. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what Desi thought. Like they've had a good year under under Cooney and they really pushed them all the way. And Westmead just didn't take their chances in the last five, six, seven That's minutes. It. When, when That's it. Uh, and uh, so you got to ask the question are Kildare any better than they were in recent years or have they pla are they still at the same level? For me, they look like the team that, like, if obviously Kevin Feely went off with a serious enough injury, right? He's a massive loss. Um, Daniel Flynn has the X factor, and you're still relying on him really to produce something special or do something special. Outside of that, I just I struggle to see where they're really going to get at the dubs or trouble the dubs. Um, I do think there's going to be a kick, a little kickback from the dubs. I don't know where John Small is at and Merchant is at. I think they're crucial to be able to get them back and maybe release Howard back into midfield. But Dublin still have, as much as, you know, people are probably saying, yeah, they're on the way down. And there's the no doubt the strength and depth is not there. And there's no doubt that the performance, there was a lapse of performance against uh, Wexford and Mead. But it's still going to take a very good side to beat them. And the core of their team is still very, very strong. Uh, and they still deliver quite consistently. So if they get one or two of the defenders back, I think it's, you know, they're still going to be hard bet. And it's not going to happen on Sunday, I think. I think the Dublin forwards will will will, will still create too many opportunities in that kill their line, yeah. uh, uh, back line and, and cause havoc, I think. Desi, um, do Dublin kind of need to make a statement here, if at all possible? If we, you know, Wheeler mentioned the Wexford results and Mead results, neither, neither what we've come to expect. And then there's the drip, drip, Paul Mannion, Eric Lowndes, <laughs> Stephen Cluxon, Stephen Cluxon, perhaps. Um, you know, um, you know, it, it does... 
there's there's almost a negative aura around the Dublin football team, which we're just not used to for the last six years. And would, you know, battering Kildare around Croke Park put an end to that and kind of reinstate their authority heading into the final four? Uh I really miss the Dublin around the Celtic Tiger era, the wheel off <laughs> with the big oven gloves heading towards the hill, arm in arm, the crowd going bananas. First round in Leinster, 80,000 people, second round, 80,000, go to the final, rocking it out with all oh, the atmosphere was electric. Uh, James, uh, you haven't shut up about all four, for God's sake. I know, I held on. <laughs> it was absolutely lucky. It was amazing. <laughs> Dublin that time, oh, under Pillar Caffrey was so exciting. Leinster Championship is, is well and truly dead and buried at the minute. I think one current player in Leinster has a, a Leinster medal outside of Dublin. Wow. That's and true. I would say, and you, you know him, Wheelow. Uh, we played Ross, football together. It was Ross Munley. Ross Munley, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, only Ross one. Man. That's the only one. Ever, other than that, the Dublin lads have them all locked away. They don't even take them out. They only jingle their all Ireland medals. But the thing about it is, um, look, uh, Owen Doyle pulled up with a big hamstring injury. He, he struggled before that game, hurt it again. And then Wheelow said Kevin Feely, massive player. Like, and I was watching him. His tactic was moving in, about, in and out with uh, Daniel Flynn a little bit. Like, uh, Kildare need one thing, in, massively injected into them. It's a bit of steel and a bit of cut. And Jack O'Connor has brought a bit of it, not enough of it, I would say. I would expect Dublin to... Dublin have listened to a lot of thunder the last little while. I'd say to be a little bit peed off, and I, I expect them to show a bit of edge now coming into this weekend. I expect them to punish Kildare, and with Kildare missing a couple of their players, I think they could be in a big bother. Uh, we'll hit the nail in the head. Daniel Flynn, he is so exciting. He's a real rough diamond, and he needs to have an outrageous game, and he needs to get goals for Kildare. Um, but at the same time, I just don't see it. I just expect this to be a strong, strong performance in Dublin yeah. and normal service resumed. One interesting yeah. factor uh, in terms of when you talk about Flynn and even in terms of the forward line, watching Kildare under Jack O'Connor, they love what you call, what I call the Paul Galvin ball. You know, this one out the right half forward and they and they hit a diagonal ball in, they try yeah. and get in. That's that's one of their go-to plays. Um, it would be interesting to see does that cause Dublin any trouble uh, in at the full back line because they will, there's no doubt about it. Like you expect that they're, they're they're gonna more or less play man to man against Kildare. They're not gonna come out, I wouldn't have thought, and play some sort of defensive system or model. They're gonna stick to what they've been doing and they will try kick the ball. So they will ask a few questions of the Dublin full back line. It'd be interesting to see how Dublin deal with it. Okay, and Rory, do you would you give Kildare a prayer here? Yeah, I just, no, listen, I don't think there's anything to add other than what the lads have just said, really. I mean, I don't think there a, a chance, really. I could, could, I know, what is it going to be? The kind of 22 point statement beating that Kerry dished out to Cork last week. Probably not that severe. Mightn't be too far off it, though. It could be 12 or 13. And I think they will have a little bit of um, spite in their performance, given that. You know, a lot of people are saying like they've been obviously supplanted as all Ireland favourites. Rightly so, I would I would suggest as well. I do think Kerry are justifiable favourites now. Um, and I know people will say Kerry are untested, but look, they're just they're trouncing everybody. Anything that's put in front of them, they are beating out the gate. So they can only do what they're doing. And I think Dublin will probably feel a little bit miffed at that. But and you probably will see, you know, a response on Sunday. And as Desi said, Kildare will probably bear the brunt of it. But I still think there are question marks around Dublin. Big questions, you know. Um, I mean, we all watched the game against Mead. And, like, it just looks to me, as just as somebody who's been watching them for so long, just there's just something. There's just, what it is, there's just something not right in the way that it used to be. There's just a lack of cohesion. Wheelow will just, tell you, Rory. Wheelow will tell you now in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Wheelow. It's, it's, it's just a little bit off. And I do, and in fairness to Mead, I mean, Mead showed a lot of bottle, and that'll probably be the stiffest test that Dublin will get in Leinster. And I think that's going to be the key thing for a lot of people watching Dublin on Sunday, and particularly the likes of Peter Keane and James Horn. I'd imagine James Horn will be there. Um, he's not necessarily like you know what you're going to get from Conor Callaghan, James McCarthy, Brian Fenton, uh, Howard, and. Um, and Josh Scully um, in there as well. And Conor Callahan. Well, the spine of the team, the lads down the middle, you know what you're going to get from them. But 
are the are, is the supporting cast as good as it used to be? And this is the big question. And this is where maybe if you go hammer to hammer, which I think any team going up against them is going to be looking at, like if we can, you know, get on top of their key players. <laughs> no one has ever done that. No one's ever done it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I do, I do, I do think there are question marks around Dublin. Will they answer them on Sunday by dishing out? a double digit beating on Kildare I don't think they will because I think they're in a sort of a lose-lose situation um, um, in so far as if they win very very comfortably it'll be a case of ah well that's what was expected and if Kildare push them close then those questions will start to grow louder Okay well look I'm not going to ask you for predictions because you've all been pretty clear about that Kildare wins all around no um, we're all going for Dublin um, So am I, I do think though Mikey just one, one, one <laughs> final point I do think is worth making I think this is the first time in the Gaelic Football Championship, probably since going back to maybe 2014, 2015, where there's genuine uncertainty of outcome. And I think that has to be welcomed in some way, shape or fashion for anybody that loves the game, you know? Like three of us at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, lads. Look, uh, great chatting to you. Desi, you wear whatever you want. As long as you feel good, Desi, that's the main thing. Yeah. And, and you won't be picking man of the match this week on Dublin until there, Desi. You don't okay, have shoes to and keep my mouth shut. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Desi, Wheelow, thank you very much. Okay, thanks very much for joining us. I'm doing the exit on my own now because halfway through that podcast, Joe Canning retired. So football was shunted back to uh, behind Hurley, which made sense. Uh, so I'm left to do the housekeeping on my own here. As always, uh, have a listen to the RT Soccer Podcast. We'll have a new RT Rugby Podcast tomorrow, Thursday, head to the second Lions Test. And uh, Marie Crow is chatting to David Gillick about Olympic uh, disappointment and his career in athletics and how he got there and will he become heroes. Uh, we've got the two provincial football finals live on RTE along with the um, Waterford Tipperary uh, All-Ireland Hurling Corner Final. Live blogs, reports, reaction on the RT website and the news net and the RT News app, and as always, live commentaries and everything else on RT One's RT Radio One's Saturday and Sunday Sport. So thank you very much for joining us, and we'll catch you again next week. Possession Goodbye. crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point, and there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. What I love in hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. It's over the bar. Oh, holy Moses!